So how do you get your first rental property? I get asked this all the time. Let me tell you a journey that I have been on. Um, I get asked this on a regular basis. Alan, I want to get a rental property. Um, I don't have 20% to put down. I can't qualify for both payments. How do you do it? Very, very simple process when you know how to take step one, two, three, four. Let me tell you what I did and what I've done over and over and over and over again. And it's a simple house hack and here's how you do it. I had, it was a great conversation. Somebody called the other day, said, Alan, I have a house in Roswell. Um, been living it for a number of years, thinking about moving and should I sell it? Should I keep it? And you know, my first thing is don't sell the thing, keep it. So here's what I did. Here's what I recommend. So you buy your first house, whatever it is, 5% down, FHA, three and a half. I don't care what it is. Buy your first house, you live there a few years, and then when you get ready to move to a new home, upsize, downsize, relocate, whatever it is, instead of selling it, just keep the thing, keep it as a rental property. Now, here's a couple of thoughts with that. Where's the money come from? Well, if you've saved up some money, you know, you go buy another house as another primary residence, move out of your current home and keep it as a rental property. Sometimes you can go in and do a line of credit if you need to tap into some of the equity to use that equity to buy your next appreciating asset to buy your next house. So you move out and you simply take your current home that you live in and you turn it into a rental property. You live there a couple of years and you move again and then you move again. And then you live there a couple of years, you move again, you may want to buy a house that's a fixer upper. You may need to go in and do some paint, you know, carpet, cosmetic work, fix it up, find something rough. And you slowly play Monopoly and you build it up. Um, and then the question is, once you do that, you know, how do you qualify? Well, when you go in and you're going to buy, and this is today, and I'll tell you guidelines on having investment properties change through time. So what I'm telling you now may be different in two days. Uh, but current guidelines right now, what it's been in the past is when you go in and buy a new place, um, right now you can go in and you've got to get a new lease. You got to get a signed lease for the home that you're moving out of, get a um, security deposit and the first month's rent. Sometimes in the past, you didn't even have to do that. And you can offset that mortgage obligation with what the rent is. There's a 75% vacancy factor. I'm not going to get too technical, but you can instead, like, do I have to qualify for both homes? No, you don't. I couldn't qualify for two houses when I bought my first one, but I knew what the market rent was going to be for the house. I knew what my mortgage payment was. And I said, well, doggone it. They offset each other. They zero each other out. So then, I can go buy my next house. And I had the money saved up. You know, I didn't put a ton of money down and I moved out and I kept it. Stayed there for a while, moved and I kept it. So what I'm telling you, I didn't take a um, three hour CE class and have a designation beside my name to say, hey, I'm the uh, uh, investor expert because I took a class or read a book or I read a podcast. This is something I have lived and done for 20 plus years now. The first home that I ever bought in Austell, Georgia, I took set up, and I'll pull a picture up at some time. My parents ended up getting divorced. My dad bought a house and he wound up moving. And I bought that house from him. It was my very first home. Um, it was like $71,000. My rate was somewhere in the sevens. Um, lived there for a number of years and then I moved. And I still have that house today. So, and this is really a special now. Some folks have, you know, they don't want to move. They feel like they're stuck. I got a 3% interest rate on my house. God, I hate to sell that and move to a house and have to get a 7% interest rate or if there's a major change. So just keep the dead gum thing. You're going to have, you have a very low monthly payment on it. Just move out. And then the question will be the big one. And this will be a next video series I'll do after this. Do I self-manage it myself or do I hire a property manager? And I'll tell you, uh, we have gone uh, both directions on that. Um, it can be a great experience to learn on your own, but it's also, it's, it can be sometimes it'd be a part-time job. Sometimes there's headaches involved. It is, there's work involved. Um, should you hire your uh, realtor friend that's never managed uh, property? No, I don't believe in that. Um, can you learn it and do it on your own? Yeah, I've got some, we've got folks, I've got folks in some houses have been in the homes for over 10 years. 
They just didn't want to move, and renting's not a bad thing for some people. So anyway, the house you're living in, keep it. Don't move out. You can turn it into a rental property. Um, I've done this over and over and over again for years. So if you've got any questions on this, the very first thing is to get the financial house in order. Hey, I'm Alan, I'm thinking about moving, thinking about you know buying another place. I'd like to get a rental property. What does that look like? There's some planning involved, preparation, get the financial house in order first, figure out what you can do, and then you take the next step. So first thing, give me a phone call. Let's touch base. Let's talk about what your plans, map something out for you, and let you get your first, first rental property. Simple, easy hack. I've done it over and over and over again, and I can show you exactly how to do it. I'm Alan Christian out of Roswell, Georgia. It's an honor. Thanks so much.